Here's another critical diagnosis made with point-of-care ultrasound. And if missed, the patient would have had a near 100% mortality. This patient came in complaining of severe scrotal pain, had a fever, looked ill. And when they did the bedside ultrasound, on the top here you can see a testicle, and right below it there is significant ring down artifact, which is indicative of air. We often call this dirty shadow, and you should be familiar with this if you ever looked at the abdomen, because gas within the bowel will create the same type of shadow. This is markedly abnormal. You should not see air in any soft tissue. If you do, you should be thinking about a necrotizing infection or gas gangrene. As they scan more, they see a hydrocele associated with this testicle. And you should note that the scrotum is very edematous. I mean, look how thick this soft tissue is. When they go over just the soft tissue itself, again, you can see very hyperechoic or bright white areas that are air with a little bit of ring down, dirty shadowing behind it. By now, you should be thinking of the diagnosis, which is Fournier's gangrene or necrotizing fasciitis of the genitourinary area. Before we had rapid diagnostics, antibiotics, and surgical techniques that actually could help with this process, the mortality was nearly 100%. But the mortality remains high. This is still a really high stakes diagnosis. The mortality is going to be still between somewhere between 20 and 40% for patients who get good care. So always maintain a broad differential and think of this diagnosis when someone has a genitourinary complaint. And it's not only men that have this. You can have a genitourinary source, an anal rectal source, but also pelvic sources of infection. Also keep in mind the comorbid conditions that are associated with these infections, which would be diabetes, other immune compromised states, and others listed here. Now let's talk about the identification of this disease. It can be a challenging dog diagnosis early on because crepitus, free air that is palpable by your hands, is a late finding in this disease. And the sensitivity of that may only be 19%. CT scan is probably the best diagnostic test you're gonna get to rule out free air. And that's the one you should go to if it's available. Ultrasound, however, should not be discounted. In a study in academic emergency medicine, the sensitivity for necrotizing fasciitis of the GU area, or Fournier's gangrene, was 88%, with over 90% sensitivity. I mean, that is pretty darn good. Now, the things you're looking for are an edematous scrotal wall, hydrocele associated with the testicle, and then for this free air, which is going to be hyperechoic, like we've seen, with a dirty shadow or ring down artifact behind it. Now, in that study that was published in 2002 in Academic Emergency Medicine, it was conducted in China, and it looked at 62 patients who they thought had necrotizing fasciitis. And the confirmatory way that they diagnosed it was by pathologic findings on fasciotomy. Now, interestingly, they weren't even looking at air on this exam. How they diagnosed necrotizing fasciitis was just by edematous tissue, and then they would look down to the fascial layer below the subcutaneous tissue, and if there was a fluid accumulation on that fascial layer of more than four millimeters, they diagnosed necrotizing fasciitis. And again, they had a sensitivity of 88%, specificity 93%, with a negative predictive value of 95%. I imagine if they put subcutaneous air in the diagnosis, those numbers would be even better. Another study published in the Journal of Ultrasound Medicine looked specifically at subcutaneous air. Now, this was a cadaver study. Six cadavers were injected at different fascial layers with air, and they had two sonographers. One sonographer injected the air, measured the depth, location, size. A second sonographer was blinded and had to identify either air or no air on these six cadavers. And the sensitivity of just identifying air or no air was 100%, and specificity 87%. These are thought-provoking studies with obvious limitations, but the point is, is that you can identify free air necrotizing fasciitis when you're doing your bedside ultrasound. And so you better know what you're looking at because you don't want to miss this diagnosis. You may be doing an ultrasound for some other reason, like looking for orchitis, epididymitis, things like that. Also, the sensitivity is pretty darn good, and it's reasonable to use this if you're in a setting that can't get a CT scan right away 
or doesn't have CT immediately available at all. And perhaps with more research, ultrasound may be used in the future for those low probability population. And for that very high probability where you really think they have the diagnosis and then you see the error on the ultrasound, we all know that urology loves being called in for your bedside ultrasound.